Hey guys and welcome back or if you're new here, hi I'm Georgia and I cover unsolved true crime on my platforms. I focus on missing, murdered and unidentified people but I do also like to dip my toe into history as well. And today I have a baffling case for you which might not actually be a case at all because there's very little evidence that the woman we're going to be talking about even ever existed. But yeah, here we are, still talking about her in 2023, 34 years after her face first appeared on TV. But first, I want to say a huge thank you to Aura for sponsoring us today. I'm sure all of us at some point have received an email from a company saying they've been hacked and accounts may have been compromised. Your password has been breached. And then you realise that you use that same password for every other account you have on the internet as well. And then it becomes an absolute nightmare. Or maybe even more scary, you've googled yourself before and found personal information on a public listing site. Your name, your phone number, your email address. It's awful to know that your personal information is out of your control. And that's where Aura comes in, an all-in-one intelligent internet safety solution that's easy to use and easy to understand. Aura can identify where your information is being exposed and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They can store your password securely and alert you as soon as there's been a breach, automatically updating your passwords with just one click. And those are just a couple of examples of all the things Aura can do to keep you safe online. They also offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection and insurance, a VPN, antivirus, family identity protection and parental controls. Aura is super simple to set up and this is a one-stop shop. You don't have to have multiple different apps and accounts to keep you safe across the board. It's all there in one at a single very affordable price. I do want to note at this point that at the moment Aura is only available in the USA but seeing as the vast majority of you guys watching me are based over there I wanted to share this with you because it is really invaluable to have. Aura can do all the hard work keeping you safe online so you can put it to the back of your mind. To start your two week free trial and find out if your personal information has been leaked online you can head to aura.com slash georgiamarie or you can click on the link in the description box down below. So the mystery we're going to be talking about today is a pretty unique one and bizarrely during the research process it made me keep thinking back to the Max Headroom incident which remains one of the creepiest things I've ever researched for this channel. And that's for reasons I still can't quite put into words, it was just incredibly unsettling, I think about it all the time. But the name Joanna Lopez first came to the public's attention on January 14th, 1989, when WMAQ Chicago ended its television broadcast as it usually did. 24-7 TV wasn't a thing back in the 80s, a TV station would sign off at a certain time, leaving a holding sort of colour bar screen until the broadcast picked up again in the morning. As always, WMAQ signed off with the national anthem. But on the 14th of January, that isn't what happened, or at least the national anthem that night was abruptly cut short and the screen didn't go to this colour holding screen. Instead, it switched to a still image, a black background with a white banner and the word missing across it, with a black and white photo of what is assumed to be a woman. Underneath the photo is the name Joanna Lopez and directions for a number to call and this number would turn out to be for the local Chicago Missing Persons Division and that is no longer active. There was no announcement over the top of this broadcast, no music, it was almost silent apart from this very soft static. And then there was also this creepy, incredibly low res photo on which you can see barely any features of the woman. Some people have said over the years that it looks like the woman had a fly face with these big bug eyes but I actually think the woman was just wearing very large glasses which was very on style for the time in 1989 and the light was just reflecting off them making for this weird photo. From what I've been able to gather online, broadcasts of missing people on TV weren't exactly uncommon during this time but usually they'd be accompanied by a voiceover and some sort of context. And I think that's what Joanna was missing here with this broadcast, context. And her photo didn't just appear for a few minutes and then disappear. No, it stayed on the TV 
all night long until the broadcast started again in the morning with no reference to it whatsoever. And one of the strangest things is this is the only time this ever happened on WMAQ, or at least as far as anyone is aware. They never broadcasted a missing person like this ever again, nor had they ever done anything like this before this point. So why Joanna? Why all night? Across Chicago, the question was, who is Joanna Lopez? What was important enough about her for this one-off broadcast of her name and her face? But then no one heard anything more. She wasn't about to become some high profile missing person. She wasn't spoken about in the news. She wasn't featured on the front page of any newspapers. It was just all round very strange, but hey, maybe she was found. Maybe the all night broadcast worked and that was that. Which could have been the case, but then in 1991, it seems like the same announcement was broadcast once again, or maybe it was broadcast once again. This seems like a very good time to mention that the vast majority of information in this case has come directly from Reddit, where there is a whole subreddit called R Joanna Lopez dedicated to finding out who this woman was. This is one of those cases where pretty much everything we know is pure speculation. All we have to go on is just this single broadcast, the photo and the name, so I'm going to be referring a lot to posts and users on Reddit. Nobody knows anything solid in this case at all. So back to that second airing in 1991, at which time the announcement also appeared at the end of a broadcast, but instead of staying all night, it did disappear after a few seconds. It was pretty much identical to the 1989 broadcast, except for the fact that the photo this time seemed to be ever slightly tweaked in terms of the brightness and exposure, although that did very little to make it any clearer. I do question though whether this sort of like colour difference, brightness difference could just be down to the technology between 1989 and 1991, although I will admit that I don't know exactly what I mean by that, I don't know what kind of technology is better, but surely there might have been some kind of improvement in those two years, I don't know. This second broadcast does seem to be a pretty big point of contention on Reddit, with all kinds of theories being thrown around as to whether or not this was actually legit. Had this same woman, Joanna Lopez, disappeared once again two years later, causing WMAQ to broadcast the same image? Was it a mistake? Did the second broadcast even exist? From what I can find, the only evidence of the second broadcast is on a YouTube channel called Dat Commercial, which is titled WMAQ NBC5 Chicago Sign Off 1991. You're putting a lot of hope into this uploader, having put down the correct date for this broadcast, because there's nothing in the video itself which points to it being from a specific date, so you're purely relying on Dat Commercial putting down the right date. But let's work under the assumption for now that this was a real broadcast and it was really from 1991. Two months ago, a user called Enigma7000 posted on the Joanna Lopez subreddit. Are we all in agreement that the 1991 broadcast was an accident? Going on to write, Given how abruptly the photo cut into the national anthem footage and how the image only appeared on screen for a few seconds, I'm pretty content assuming that this was made mistakenly, hence why it appeared and was pulled so quickly. Unless anyone can think of a new reason as to why it would be done deliberately, I think we can all agree that the 1991 broadcast was a mistake. Of which I must admit I do understand the sentiment, but this theory kind of brushes over the fact that the second broadcast could be made because Joanna Lopez was missing once again. Although then again, why would they only show it for 10 seconds at the end of the broadcast? User ChaiBears85 responded saying, it was most likely not an accident. I've worked in broadcast TV before for local news affiliates. You can't just accidentally put a picture up like that without already having it in the control room loaded and ready to go. Most likely Joanna Lopez was a runaway and the family or people who submitted the missing to WMAQ never followed up. So her slide stayed in the rotation of other missing people until they discontinued showing missing people on WMAQ. Or there's user Too Lace BC who posted 10 months ago with their own explanation. So I spoke to an editor today with WMAQ Channel 5 in Chicago. I will not give personal details, the name of the editor or the number I use, but what I can tell you about the second airing is this. Back in 1989, when the station would broadcast anything, it was recorded on a master copy. 
From what I understand, the main master copy of their original sign-off was lost. See, back then you would have your sign-off tape with your PSAs and then it would switch over to the missing person slate. Stay on air for two hours and everyone would go home. In this case, the master copy was reused as a sign-off and it had the recording of Joanna Lopez missing at the end of it. So it works like this. Tape of PSAs, national anthem plays, then switch to Joanna's slate. Boom, master copy is recording this the whole time. Now tape gets lost or worn out due to age and overuse, so pop in an old master copy so they can play the end of air stuff. Pop in tape, see Joanna, say oh shit and go dark because it's an old tape. Which I think if you ask me is the explanation that makes the most sense. Or maybe again, Joanna really was missing once more. But I suppose what we really need to focus on is what do we know about Joanna? And the answer is not much. This photo of her is all we have and it doesn't really give anything away. The general consensus seems to be that it's such a bad quality photo because the photo broadcast was a photocopy, distorting what was probably already not a great quality photo. Reddit user the Lava Hot Shits, yes, genuine name, made a reconstruction of this photo a year ago, detailing the step by step process, so where they sharpened, brightened, highlighted, added colour, and more, until eventually they were able to find Joanna's actual features underneath this bad quality photo. In the end, she looked like this. For my podcast listeners, if you're curious, I'll leave a link in the description of the podcast for you to go and find this recreation. But if this recreation is correct, Joanna is likely African American, with curls piled on top of her head. Some commenters did describe her as Afro-Latina, for which I assume they're going off her surname, Lopez, but I don't really know how much you can tell that off the recreation. Joanna also seems to have an overbite, and she was wearing the stylish large glasses of the time, along with some pretty heavy makeup, again very fitting for the time period. It seems that people online tend to think that Joanna was more likely than not to be a minor who had run away, her family having contacted WMAQ to let them know and then they ran the missing broadcast last minute. The reconstructed photo does certainly seem to suggest that she was on the younger end, most likely a teenager. According to user Bubblegum Trad on Reddit, an individual on the subreddit did actually speak to the news station about this case, and through that conversation, they were able to learn that the information about Joanna and the photo submitted to them was done so anonymously by an individual. So the notice about Joanna being missing didn't come from the police or authorities of any kind. This came from a regular civilian, which I think does make it more likely that Joanna was a runaway. Maybe her disappearance had been reported to the police and the police just didn't really care. I mean, we know very well on this channel that police don't care about looking for runaways, particularly not in the 70s, 80s, 90s. And the family, not knowing where to turn to next, just go directly to the news station who decided to run the broadcast. And maybe the fact the news station let it run all night was simply just a mistake, they forgot to pull it. I mean, why would they run this all night when they've seemingly never done it before or since? Well, that's the main mystery here, isn't it? Actually, no, that's literally not the main mystery. The main mystery is who is Joanna Lopez? Was she a real person? User Bubblegum Trad definitely seems to be one of the main people and researchers on this subreddit, so thank you to them for all their hard work in this case. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking that this can't be too much of a mystery. There must be some record of a Joanna Lopez in Chicago at this time, or at least a Joanna Lopez who went missing in this time, because I'm sure that is a fairly common name. Well, Bubblegum Trad writes that they work for a university with a social work division. They say they have exhausted their own database, NamUs, and any other site that could contain missing persons reports, but it doesn't seem like anything about this case has ever been digitised, which means there are three possibilities. One, there are no records because Joanna was never reported as missing officially. As I mentioned a moment ago, police don't really tend to care about runaways. Two, Joanna is not her real name. I mean, maybe Joanna was a name she went by but wasn't her legal name. Maybe it was her legal name but not the name she went by. Or three, the records have simply been lost or just never digitised. 
There have been connections made with a woman called Rachel Lopez who attended West Chicago Community High from 1988 to 1991, making her about the right age range for Joanna and her yearbook photo does bear a resemblance, especially as she is also sporting very large glasses. People contacted the school who confirmed that Rachel Lopez did indeed graduate in 1991, which means if Rachel was Joanna and she went missing, it was only temporary. However, it seems that Rachel Lopez was eventually contacted by user cringe Nay Nay Baby 2 who confirmed that she wasn't connected to the broadcast, so that was another dead end. I mean, the thing about this case, I suppose, is it's very low stakes. The likelihood is that Joanna Lopez was found shortly after the broadcast if she ever really was missing, and she is living her life unaware of the online sleuths in search of answers here. I mean, it's just intriguing, isn't it? Everything about the incident, from the weird low-res photo, the lack of any records of her ever existing, the fact that this is the only time this television station ever aired anything like this overnight. Which kind of leads us on to the theory that this could have just been a test from the station, them trying out something new that they were thinking about doing going forward. I mean, a missing persons announcement appearing on screens all night is bound to get a lot more views than an announcement just appearing on screens for 30 seconds during the day. Or is it? How many people actually have the TV on outside of broadcast hours? Maybe the station wanted to test it. So someone at the station got hold of a bad quality photo of a relative on purpose so nobody would actually be able to recognise her. They made up a generic name and stuck the missing persons number on there. They stuck up for the entire night, analysed the numbers, realised that it wasn't all that helpful, and so they never did it again. They didn't think it was a big deal, so just never made any statement about it. I mean, at the time it was weird, but nobody really thought that much about it. It wasn't until about 2020, 2021-ish, I think, that the internet really grabbed a hold of this and thought it deserved some deeper exploration. Up until that point, nobody really cared. The latest big movement in this case seems to come from February 2022 when Bubblegum Trad was able to locate a possibility for Joanna Lopez, finding a woman who matched the age, location and name. They found her phone number, gave her a call and she confirmed that she was indeed called Joanna Lopez as she'd run away aged 18. However, the woman had to cut the call short and said that she would call back soon and she didn't. A follow-up text was sent that she never replied to and not wanting to harass this poor woman, the posters didn't send any more follow-ups or try to contact her again. Now it's May 2023 and they never heard back from her. There are a lot of possibilities here. I mean, maybe this really was Joanna Lopez. She ran away when she was 18. Her family contacted the news station because presumably the police weren't interested. The news station ran the announcement all night, probably by accident. Joanna was found and it was run again in 1991 when she ran away again. Or maybe it was run again in 1991 by accident. Joanna moved on with her life, never realizing what was going on. In 2022, random people from the internet contact her, she freaks out and gets off the phone, deciding to ignore them if they contacted her again. I mean, I think that's what I'd do if I were in her shoes. Or maybe this woman was a different Joanna Lopez entirely who just also happened to run away. I'm sure a lot of kids did run away at some point. Maybe she was confused, but the people on Reddit do seem to think that this was the right person, so take from that what you will. There's no confirmation, there's no way of knowing that this was definitely the correct person. The users who found her have never shared exactly how they found her or any personal details about her because, well, of course they wouldn't. There's no way of knowing still if Joanna Lopez really existed, or at least if this Joanna Lopez who appeared on our TV screens really existed. It seems with this latest update, the subreddit agreed to focus on information surrounding the broadcast rather than Joanna herself, but again, there haven't been any big new updates on this in quite a while. And honestly, that is about all we have. There have been multiple links made to possible Jane Doe's over the years that could be Joanna, but we don't know for sure that Joanna is dead, so it does feel like clutching at straws just trying to make connections on the very little information that we have, so I'm not going to go through all of those. If you ask my opinion, I do think this might have been just a test on behalf of the TV station. I think they were trying out something new, got a bad quality photo on purpose, and ran with it. 
But if Joanna Lopez was real, I hope she's alive and thriving with no idea of the search, no idea of her photo being out there. But this is a case that's very fun to theorise about. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for spending this time with me and with Joanna Lopez, whoever she may be. I do hope again she's out there alive and thriving and living her best life. Thank you to the subreddit. This video wouldn't be possible without the subreddit and all the users on there who have done so much research in this case. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring today. Again, make sure you go and check them out in the top line of the description box down below. Keep yourself safe online, please everyone. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.